Hello, I'm Spiralark GFX, and welcome to my channel. You may have heard about plugins for Paint.net, but there's just so many to choose from. Which ones should you get? Which ones are the most valuable? Welcome to 5 must-have Paint.net plugins. Number 5. Color to Alpha Sometimes, you want to delete a color with a certain RGB value, or partially remove it with a bit of leeway. With Color to Alpha, you have options to turn a color into transparency based on its hue, saturation, brightness, or a combination of those three, giving you 27 different combinations. See, I knew Algebra 2 would come in handy one day. The tolerance can be adjusted to reveal how far outside the boundaries that option can reach. The feather basically blurs parts of the image that are isolated from the others, giving a feathered look. The base opacity determines if the selected regions are completely transparent, completely opaque, or somewhere in the middle. You can also make the regions not selected transparent by checking the invert alpha box. Number 4. Color Replacer Although you can hold shift and use the magic wand tool to select a certain color within a general tolerance, placing that with something else can be very frustrating, individually selecting each selection. However, with Color Replacer, you can choose which color the plugin will scan in the image and replace it with a different color, or just cut off that color by checking the Use Transparency box and setting the transparency to zero. You can also adjust the tolerancy, or how far away the original hue it will select, as well as what you're actually replacing the color with. One downside though, is that you can't use Color Picker tool while the plugin pop-up is open in order to get those colors into the plugin pop-up. Color picking them with the Color Picker tool, putting them into the primary and secondary colors, and then selecting the correct bullet point is necessary beforehand. You can also add the selected color onto the area without erasing it by checking the Keep Color Distance box. For additional utility, you can use the Rectangle Select with the Lasso Select tool to specify the area for which the selection will take place. Number 3. Perspective Most distortions in photos are used to create cool or trippy effects, but perspective is different, allowing you to add depth and a 3D aspect to your photo while maintaining a clean feel. Some downsides, however, are that if distorted too much, sides of the image can become transparent because of lack of pixels and other sides of the image can become low quality because of scaling pixels up, pixelating that side. Also, as a side note, if you want to view the entire picture, be sure to scale it down beforehand. Number 2. Composition Grids Even being given the X and Y coordinates of the cursor in the bottom right corner of the screen, as well as the handy ruler surrounding the canvas, physically placing layers and objects to have an equal distance on both sides, but being symmetrical was very difficult to do. Thankfully, Composition Grids is a lifesaver allowing you to divide the screen into 16 equally sized sections using cross vertical and horizontal and quarters and also into 36 equal sized sections using cross vertical and horizontal, thirds, and sixth. There are even more options for diagonal lines and circles and they all conform to the size and aspect ratio of the canvas. The line width can also be adjusted being bigger, making them easier to see and being smaller, allowing for more precision. Number 1. Object Align One of my biggest grips about Paint.net when I first used it was that there was no way to align plugins, unlike Photoshop, where snapping and aligning objects was a breeze. Relating to the previous plugin remotely, object aligning allows you to horizontally and or vertically align layers with ease. In essence, it's not one plugin, but seven small plugins that happen to fit into the Object Align category. However, be wary. This only works with transparent layers, a white background will not work. On a single layer, you can tell if it is transparent if it has the checkerboard styled white and gray boxes surrounding it. On multiple layers, you will have to show or hide other layers below it to make sure that it is transparent around the object. For example, I draw this rectangle on my background and try to align it. The lining process works, because this is a single layer that is transparent around the object. However, if I draw this rectangle on a white background and try to align it, the lining process does nothing, because the plugin thinks that the box and the white background are all one object, taking up the entire screen and doing literally nothing. Like always, links for these will be in the description. So what do you think of this list? Would you have put them in a different order? For my channel in general, should I do more videos like this or more speed arts? Comment below and tell me what you think. This video took me a long time to outline, script, and edit. 
and I would appreciate it if you dropped a like to show your support. You can also find my store as well as details about me on my website, spiralartgfx.com. For me, I'll see you in the next video.